Hello, everybody, and welcome to exercise three on page 36 of the workbook here. Let's read this question together. So let beta equal uv be a basis for a vector space v, where u and v are distinct vectors, and we would like to prove that the related set beta prime, u plus v and u minus v, is also a basis for v. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind as we're going through this is that this is a very abstract setting. We don't know anything about these two vectors u and v. They might be tuples, they might be functions, they might be matrices, and so we're going to have to do some abstract thinking and be careful about using definitions as we go through the argument that we're going to make here. Okay, so what we're trying to prove is that this set that I'm underlining is a basis. Okay, and remember that a basis has two properties. It has to be linearly independent and it has to generate the set. Okay, so let's start with the linear independence part of that. See if we can prove that beta prime is linearly independent. Okay, and we'll make that remark first. We will first show that beta prime is linearly independent. Okay, so suppose that C1 times u plus v plus C2 times u minus v is equal to the zero vector. For scalar C1 and C2. Now, why would we start with that assumption? Okay, well, remember how we defined linear dependence and linear independence. It had to do with forming this linear combination, setting it equal to zero, and asking whether or not we have non-trivial solutions. Okay, so we would like to show that C1 and C2 have to be zero, that this, that, that, that equation has only the trivial solution. That would show that this is a linearly independent set, and that's where we're going. Okay, the question is, how do we get there? Well, the only set that we really have information about is this one up here. We know that beta is a basis. U and V form a basis. And so it makes sense to try to work with this equation and reorganize it in a way so that it's a linear combination of the vectors that we know something about, U and V. That's kind of our goal here. All right, so by rearranging... equation one we get, the first thing we're going to do is just take those scalars and distribute them through. So C1u plus C, C1v plus C2u minus C2v is equal to the zero vector. And then just do some grouping. Okay, so we've got a couple of terms that involve u. Let's put those together. Okay, and then we've got a couple of terms that involve v. We'll put those together c1 minus c2v is equal to the zero vector. Okay, but again, recall that we were given in the problem that this set beta up here is a basis. That means that one of the things we know about beta is that it's linearly independent. And so because this is a linear combination of u and v, we know, set equal to zero, we know that it can only have the trivial solution. In other words, these two constants that I'm underlining have to be zero. Okay, let's see if we can put all of that into words here. Okay, so because beta is linearly independent, we must have C1 plus C2 equals C1 minus C2 equals zero. Both of those constants have to be zero. Okay, I'm going to call that two. Okay, so now we're just going to make an observation that equation two is really two equations. It's a system of equations. C1 plus C2 and C1 minus C2 both have to be zero. Okay, so note that 2 is equivalent to the following system of equations. Okay, and we'll just write it down. Um, C1 plus C2 equals 0, C1 minus C2 equals 0. We'd like to solve that system of equations. 
Okay, so let's do it this way. This isn't too difficult. So adding the equations yields, uh, let's see, C1 plus C1 is 2C1. Okay, that's what we get if we add these two terms. And then if we add these two, they're going to cancel out, so we just get 0. And over on the right, 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay, but if 2C1 is equal to 0, then so is C1. Okay, but that means that if we just maybe um, pick on this first equation, if we know that C1 is 0, C2 is going to have to be 0 as well. Okay, because C1 equals negative C2, or actually, let's do that the other way around. Okay, C2 is going to equal negative C1, and we know that C1 is 0, so we're going to get 0 for the second one. Okay, so what have we demonstrated here? Well, we just proved that both C1 and C2 are equal to 0. And I want to scroll back up to equation 1. Okay, what we just proved is that these two numbers both have to be 0, so we have just demonstrated that 1 has only the trivial solution. There's our linear independence. Okay, let's finish this statement. So it follows from 1, or let's say it this way, that 1 has only the trivial solution. proving that beta prime is linearly independent. Okay, now let's pause a minute just to get our bearings here. Okay, what is it that we were trying to prove again way back at the beginning of this? Okay, what we wanted to prove is this statement. Okay, that beta prime is a basis. Okay, we just proved half of that, right? Okay, we proved that beta is linearly independent. What's the other part of the definition of a basis? Okay, that, that beta prime is also a generating set. Now we could do that directly, but we can save ourselves some time by using a theorem that we talked about earlier. Okay, so instead of trying to prove the generating part of this directly, let's make an observation about the dimension of our vector space. Okay, the dimension of V, do we know what it is? Okay, in the statement of the problem, they told us that beta equals UV is a basis. Okay, that has two vectors in it, so that really tells us that the dimension is 2. Okay, just the number of vectors in 2. If you're wondering what this notation means, the, the, those two bars that look like an absolute value, that just means number of elements in the set beta. Okay, it has two elements. Okay, so here's what we have then. We have a linearly independent set beta prime that has two vectors in it, u plus v and u minus v, and we know that the dimension of our vector space is 2. We have a theorem that tells us that that's enough information to tell us that beta prime is also a generating set. Okay, let's see if we can put that all together into a statement. Okay, so therefore, okay, since beta prime is linearly independent, and contains exactly two vectors, okay, which happens to be the dimension of our vector space, it follows from DF4 that beta prime is a basis. Okay, so by so by remembering this fact DF4, we were able to spare ourselves the, the, the trouble of actually directly showing that beta, that beta prime is a generating set.